Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome along to the shoutiest segment on Irish radio. It is the scintillating, it's the stupefying, it's the splendido crappy quiz. Every Friday we pit three of team off the ball up against each other in an no-holds-barred quiz of sporting factoids at the end of the week. Allow me to welcome today's contestants. Our first contestant today introduced crappy quiz viewers and listeners to his new puppy, Bailey, some months ago. Since Bailey stormed onto the scene that day, we have not seen the dog again. Was this contestant jealous of the spotlight being shone on his pet dog? Was he worried that the Darling of the Nation label will be sacrificed to Bailey? The crappy quiz demands answers. Justice for that cute puppy. Give it up for the Meath Hill Billy Tommy Rooney. Morning, folks. Um, listen, Bailey, uh, I've taught him very well. He sleeps during the show in the morning, so he's uh, currently, he's not even in the room. He's uh, outside the door there sleeping. So I'll give him a shout if you want. Yeah. But don't worry, kids. If you want to see Bailey, just get on to Tommy Rooney's Instagram and you'll see 25 photos <laughs> a day. Tommy Tommy's worked out the algorithm for Instagram. Uh, half of them are of the dog and half of them are of his girlfriend and half of them are of him posing at the Cliffs of Moher. <laughs> that is definitely, that is definitely oh, the man. algorithm. That is it. That, that, that is it. That, that, well, no, listen, if anyone wants to work out algorithms, go check out Adrian Barry on TikTok. I know he's on holidays today, but go check out Adrian Barry on TikTok. That's how you figure out Adrian algorithms. Adrian is on TikTok. What? I'm telling you. Missing? Yeah. Go check it out. <laughs> Yeah, Adrian. become his third follower. <laughs> Adrian, he, he is downloading certain videos and putting them up on Twitter, so I'm sure plenty of his uh, Twitter following will also be aware of, of what we're talking about there. Top class. Uh, our next contestant today loves hanging out with all the professional American golfers he's made friends with as star of Patreon's own Golf Weekly. Some of his favourite guests include podcast regulars Troy Merritt, Moy Trerrit, T Merritt and Troy M. It's a major week for a major crappy quiz player. It's the beast of Ballyhonest, Nathan Nate Dog Murphy. Hey, you go easy on our boy Troy. He's now in fairness. I mean, it's a it's a great contact to have. Are, are you enjoying the golf? Or is is West Coast uh, time suiting you? No, West Coast time is most certainly not suiting me. I went to bed about one o'clock last night. And Rory McIlroy played four holes. I thought I'm done with this. Yeah. So it's going to be a long old weekend. Yeah. Well, so we've got a, a half awake Nathan Murphy basically for the quiz this morning. So he's vulnerable. Should everyone still win, though. I'm still still, still very confident. Yeah. Our last contestant today was only happy to come on this quiz once she was assured of a teammate for Mead and an opponent for Mayo. It's going to be like 1996 all over again and ready to go all Colum Coyle on the crappy quiz. It's Ashling. This town ain't big enough for two Mead personalities, O'Reilly. <laughs> No, I want to put it out there that I did not ask for an invite on this quiz. I know it's like a prestigious thing to come on this quiz. No, no, I mean, quizzes are not good. So, yeah, I'm going to laugh at myself. I, I, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to be getting an angry text now any minute from Colin Buhig, who spent the last <laughs> six months bitching the moment about why he wasn't allowed to come on the quiz. <laughs> Hold that, on. That there was some sort of hierarchy that he should be allowed in, and why are we keeping certain people off it? And then Nathan, he was let Nathan, on, Nathan, Nathan, and he Nathan. embarrassed himself and humiliated himself. He did embarrass himself. He did, but it's a big Nathan thing, Nathan, Nathan making your crappy quiz debut. I know, not to pile the pressure on Ashley, but it's a massive day for today. It's also her birthday. So, oh, no way. Oh, happy, wow. happy birthday, Happy Ashley. birthday, Ashley. Happy, happy birthday, Ashley. I got through that whole show. Wow. I that's... actually for, I, I forgot earlier to tell Owen, so happy birthday, <laughs> live on air, on your crappy quiz debut. We, so best of luck. Did, like, I mean, oh, yeah. We won't give, we, we won't give away Ashley's birthday. age, but she won't be giving, getting the vaccine for about 18 months. So. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we uh, we would have made a much bigger deal of that earlier on in the show. This is must be a highlight for you. Crappy quiz debut for your birthday. Incredible. You can uh, podcast the Crappy Quiz, by the way, on otbsports.com, the OTB Sports app. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure to click the thumbs up, even if you contribute nothing but misery to your day. Forgot to mention the format. The format is the classic Crappy Quiz. Series of questions on a range of themes this week. And then it's the slip and slide of trivia, which is the rapid fire round. And again, we would love your questions. You can send them in by a postcard to Crappy Quiz Quizmaster off the ball towers, Marconi House, Diggs Lane, Dublin 2. Right, round one is the boring questions round. Never multiple choice. Tommy. David Tuberty became the top-scoring league footballer of all time this year, overtaking Sligo's Mickey Cairns. Can you tell me who is in second place in the current footballers list? Oh, so just just to clarify, because obviously it's the boring questions round. You're asking me if the current player is still playing. Who's behind Tuberty? Yes. Still playing. Uh... Killian, o Killian O'Connor. It's not Killian O'Connor. Anyone want to have a stab at that? 
What do you mean, oh my God, you don't know the bloody answer? <laughs> Tommy, I don't present a three hour long GA oh, podcast. Hold on a second, it wasn't week. a bad guess. He's the top scorer in championship history. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But how many league games has he played? Not very so many. He played his 100th, 100th Mayo game last week. 40 of them were league games, 60 of them were championship games. He usually skips the league because okay. he's got better things to do. I didn't so, know that. But Mayo wasn't Killian O'Connor. These are the Listen, basics, Tommy. We Andy Moore is laughing at you right now. We were actually chatting like, about I'll this. I'll be in the hot seat next week. We were chatting about this on OTB AM actually during the week, Tommy, which you clearly didn't pay any attention to. Killian O'Connor's only played 40 league games ever. Connor McManus is the answer, by the way. He's in second place. Uh, oh, Nathan, question. That was, that was easy. Question one for you, Nathan. Who finished second to Rory McIlroy when he won his one and only US Open title to date? Ah, that's a joke. He could probably name the top 10. Oh, no chance, no chance. Jeez. No one remembers the second place. Not when you win by, what, eight shots? Eight strokes, yeah. Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm so happy no one's getting any. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure's well and truly off at this point. Well, Nathan can pull it out yeah. now. <laughs> Phil Mickelson? Not Phil Mickelson, no. Jason Day. Uh, finished second in 2011. Ashling, I feel like you've, I feel like you've got that question before on the quiz. Jason, yeah. they does come up quite a bit. Uh, yeah. Ashling, to take a lead here, Ange Postecoglou okay. will be hoping to bring Celtic straight back to glory next season. But can you tell me which post Martin O'Neill manager has the best win percentage at the club? Post Martin O'Neill. Okay. Um... So the key thing to do here is do a Nathan Murphy and list through every everybody that comes yeah. to mind and then um uh, even if you okay, don't get a point everybody with... will credit you okay um my least favorite manager brendan rogers it's not brendan rogers he fell into Ooh. the trap the answer no the answer is neil lennon oh, and wow. he, really? even in neil lennon's second stint alone he had a higher win percentage than brendan rogers I, mean, I thought that was too obvious. Just, justice for Lennon is, is what I'm saying. So it's nil all after round one. Great stuff, everyone. Uh, round two is the bit between the teeth round. After Antonio Rudiger showed some teeth in his battle with Paul Pogba earlier this week, this round will test your knowledge on the other hungry, hungry footballers we have seen down through the years. Tommy, question two for you. It's not just footballers, actually. It's all sports people. Uh, <laughs> Dylan Hartley received an eight-week ban in 2012 for biting which Ireland player in the Six Nations? It is multiple choice. A, okay. Sean O'Brien. <laughs> B, Stephen Ferris, or C, Jamie Heaslip? I'm trying to think of, I'm trying to put myself into Dylan Hartley's mind. Who would you be most likely to bite? Well, go on. Give me the three of them again. Sean O'Brien, Stephen Ferris, Jamie Heaslip. Who are you biting? When was Hartley peak Hartley? I don't think Ferris was around. I don't think. Oh, Ferris, yeah. Uh, I'd say he bit Sean O'Brien. No. Ah, Stephen Ferris. Did he? Yeah. Oh, I thought Ferris would have retired by 12. Okay. No. Nope. Uh, Nathan, question two for you. Which footballer bit the nose of Daily Mirror journalist Ted Oliver in Dublin before the Republic of Ireland played England in the 1995 game that was eventually abandoned? Was it A, Paul Gascoigne, B, Neil Ruddock, or C, Vinnie Jones? C, Vinnie Jones. Nathan knows it. Correct. Well, you've got yeah. it without multiple choice? I would have, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah, quite easy, quite easy. Uh, well, only easy if you know them. Yeah, it's, it's true, it's true. Uh, Ashling, Luis Suarez, to the best of our knowledge, never bit an opponent while playing for which of these clubs? A, Ajax, B, Liverpool, or C, Barcelona? Um, Liverpool? No, not Liverpool. Uh, Branislav Ivanovic will tell you that he very much did bite somebody while uh, playing for Liverpool, suspended for 10 games for that. Uh, and Barca? No, it was Barca, yeah, because uh, while playing for Ajax, he was suspended for seven games for biting PSV Eindhoven's Othman Bacal on the shoulder. Uh, he, he was uh, loving a bit of shoulder, then he uh, liked a bit of arm for a while, then he went back to his shoulder with, with Chiellini, uh, a man of many tastes. Round three mm. is the Scotland versus England round, Nathan Murphy in a 1-0 lead here. Ahead of one of the most anticipated events of Euro 2020, this round will test your knowledge on the football relationship shared between Scotland and England. Tommy. This is a very easy one. Who scored England's other goal against Scotland at Euro 96? The one that wasn't Gaza. I'm sure you've seen the highlights package of this 40 times in the space of the last seven days. The questions aren't suiting me this morning. Ah, uh, Tommy. Tommy. Um, I'm loving it. Teddy Sheringham. No. Alan Shearer. Alan Shearer, Tommy. 
Come on, Tommy. Nathan, <laughs> in what decade did England and Scotland first meet in association football? Jesus. 1920s. 1920s? It's the, one 18, of the oldest fixtures in football. 18, 1880s. 1870s. 1870s or 1872. I thought maybe it was in an official game or something. Football only started in 1920, according to Nathan Murphy, a cla classic well, Premier 1992. League man. 1992. Um, Ashling, question three for you. Mm -hmm. Can you name the two teams involved the last time a Scottish club played in uh, played an English club in the Champions League? The two teams involved. Yes. Okay. Um... These are tough questions. I should have got Shearer. If you don't know them. Should have got Shearer. And you should have been Amazing. about 30 years closer with the 1920s. Sure, it doesn't matter. If you're wrong, you're wrong. So, you're right, you're right. so can you name the two teams involved the last time a Scottish club came up against an English club in the Champions League? And this is the main Champions League, not the qualifying rounds. Um, Celtic and, and the other Scottish one, isn't it? Celtic no, and, and which English team? Oh, Celtic and Man City? Correct. Yeah. Ashton off the mark. What all? It was the 2016-17 group stage. You're, you're probably at that game. Or, I uh, wasn't, but I remember watching it. Woo. Uh, Delighted. Round, so there you go. Ashton, I'm on Nathan, I'm on Tommy on nil, which we uh, head into round four with, which is the fun free yes, magic Tommy. number round. Uh, contestants get three points for getting the number exactly right. If no one manages that, the nearest contestant who doesn't go bust gets two points. The second closest gets one point. Colin Buhig impressed everyone last week by being a newbie to the quiz and having a pen and paper ready. Do you have a pen and paper ready, Ashling? There yes. we go, two weeks in a row. This is, this is great. Uh, I'm going to say that we can only accept the answer that's written on your paper. I'm also going to have to ask for your pens once the music ends. So, if you don't mind, give us the following number. The number of All-Star Team of the Year appearances made by Killian O'Connor in his career to date. Plus, the number of own goals scored so far in this year's Euros. Plus, the number of NBA Championship rings won by Kevin Durant to date. Plus, the number of times England have won their opening game at a European Championships in their history. Your 30 seconds expire when Sinatra sings bright shiny beads. So to go through those again, the number of times Killeen O'Connor has been on the All-Star Team of the Year, plus the number of own goals that have been scored so far at Euro 2020, plus the number of NBA Championship rings Kevin Durant has won, and then how many times have England won their opening game at the Euros? Uh, I have to go for this. Tommy going all in, hands down. What have you gone for, Tommy? Originally, I had 21, but I changed it to 24. Okay. Uh, Nathan? Oh, no. <laughs> Nathan's gone for 11. 11. Ashling? Oh, God, mine's really messy. I don't know if I should show it. 17? 17. You've all gone way over. You've all gone way over. The answer is what? eight. The answer is eight. Is Kevin Durant eight? never won any? Kevin Durant's won two. Really? Kenny O'Connor has surely been an all star, like, oh, maybe. Twice. Okay. Well, Kenny, Kenny O'Connor's been an all star twice. Ah, that's outrageous. 2014 and 2020. Worse than typical, Clemson. Typical Dublin bias. <laughs> I got really confused there. Yes, when Nathan. You said team of the year. Uh, the number of own goals scored so far in this year's Euros is three. Two. Three. three. And then England yeah. have won their opening game of the Euros once. Once. Which was last Sunday against Croatia, which brings your total to eight. This is the wow. first time, I think, ever that nobody's got any points from the Fun Free Magic number round. If you'd just gone for zero <laughs> and just packed it in, you would have scored something. But no, we stay as we are. It is Nathan one, Ashling one, and we. I don't get a point for being the closest, anyways. This is a tough quiz. I'm having a bad, a bad, bad day. If Nathan versus Ashling, Ashling gets the tie break. So them's the breaks, uh, Nathan. You've won it uh, quite a bit in the past. So we're on to the final. Just because it's her birthday. Outrageous. It's what the the the. I'm so happy the, I got one. The coin toss says in this round. So the the, the score you get in this round will be added to your score in the previous round. 40 seconds for everyone to answer from the same set of questions. So we'll start with the person with the highest number of points. By tiebreak, it's going to be Ashling, then on to Nathan, and then on to Tommy. And if you get a question correct, I'll keep asking you questions until you get one wrong. And once you get a question wrong, I'll move on to the next person. And your incorrect answer also means a deduction of one point. Ashling O'Reilly, are you ready? Yeah. Your 40 seconds. I have to do this as quick as I can, isn't it? Yeah, as quick as you can. If you delay, okay. we'll just move on. So. Your 40 seconds starts now. 
What club does Netherlands Denz Denzel Dumfries play for? Um, Too long. PSV Eindhoven. What AFLW team is Breed Stack signed with, Nathan? Collingwood. No, as uh, the Giants. Who is Scotland manager, Tommy? Dave Clark. Correct. Gianluigi Buffon has signed for what club this week? Parma. Correct. Name our manager GA's county grounds. The Athletic Grounds. Correct. And what year did Harry Kane first appear at a major tournament? 2016. Correct. Who is the French Open women's champion? Oh, Croach. I can't pronounce it. Kachikova. In what country? In what country is the Copa America currently taking place, Ashley? How did he do that? There's, uh, there's actually no point uh, in answering that because Tommy's brought it back to three. Nathan and Ashley both end up on zero. Tommy Rooney from the depths of hell has won this crappy quiz. Let's play the music for Tommy. Them's the breaks. Raging. Tommy, that's how do you feel? Could, could, his, could his questions have been any easier? Well, look, it, that's the way it goes. There's no point going into the rapid fire round and being in first position. Ashley, success leaves clues. This is what you learn. <laughs> Try and keep it safe at the start. Uh, this is easy. here. Would you stop with your absolute bullshit? You spend too much yeah. time with Paddy. Hey. Paddy and Andy. Paddy and Andy actually successful. They're not leaving any clues for you, Tom. I've won There's nothing five. you can bring back to me. I've won five. There's nothing you can eight. bring back to me. Can you imagine being in the Mead Hill dressing room at training these days? Last lads, you should have heard what Paddy was telling me off there. Oh, this is what the dubs are doing. We got to be doing it like the dubs are doing. This is what the dubs <laughs> knows this. We're going to have an edge. Junior champions this year, lads. And Andy, Andy, this, this, and Valley of Dream. Oh, wait, you see, lads, we're going to do all the sessions. Can you imagine that nonsense for 45 minutes before every session? <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. That is the greatest impression I've ever seen anyone do of me in my life. That was awesome. uh, You have put... I, I just... The one thing is, I haven't been to training yet this year, so... Y you have... Oh, you're transferring to a team down in Clare, I hear. That's the problem. That, that's no, it's just... just you, are you transferring? Just, no. Couldn't do that. No. Are you transferring? He's turning his back and meet him. No, Unbelievable. I'm staying as well. Unbelievable. Enough. Yeah, see, look at Ashley's travelling back for games. I'm travelling back as well, so... That's just the way it is. Well, well Tommy, you've Nathan. got a big win. Congratulations. Nathan, incredible impression of Richard Cooper <laughs> would be put to shame by that. <laughs> Ashley O'Reilly, happy birthday. Thanks very much for taking Ooh. part. But it is Tommy Rooney's world. We're all living in it.